Okay, we're gonna start with jumping jacks. And punches. Keep your hands up, keep your feet moving. skaters. Knees. Make sure when you do this that your weight is on your standing foot and the knee, standing knee is bent. Other side. touch jacks. So you start here and you jump your feet out and instead of bringing your hands up, you're going to squat down and touch the opposite toe. You're not doing this. Okay, you're bending the knees. That's where the work is. Front side back. Okay, that was the first time through. I need you to pause the video and go through that two more times. So the sequence is jumping jacks, punches, skaters, knees, touch jacks, and kicks. So two more times through the set, 30 seconds each, each drill. Okay, so now you should be back and we will stretch, reach up. And I'm not just putting my hands up, but I'm reaching up, trying to push my hands toward the ceiling and then down, back flat, trying to reach my hands, chin is up, hands straight in front of me as far as they'll go. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee, chin is up, laptop here. Other side. Take your feet, cross one in front of the other, chin up, reach your chest towards your knees. And then up, switch feet, chin up, chest towards your knees. Have a seat, feet out, keep both butt cheeks on the floor. Reach over, grab your toes with the hand on the same side, and then reach over the top. Other side. And then to the center, when you come to the center, make sure your toes stay up and your chin stays up. Reach your elbows toward the floor. Pull your 
feet in together. Reach. Well, the goal is at least to get your toes and take your heels up off the floor. But if you can reach out past your toes, that's good. Keep your chin up so it's not here, but you're here. Pull your feet in. Put the bottoms of your feet together. Keep your back straight. Okay, some of you guys, don't, don't ever grab your toes when you do this. You want to grab your ankles. And when I grab my ankles, it tends to round my back. If you can grab your ankles and keep your back perfectly straight, that's great. Otherwise, put your hands here to force your back straight and push, press your knees down. Feet together, or feet on the floor, almost together. Come to the squat, and then put your hands on the floor, and straighten out your legs. Stand up. Okay, arms over and under. Nice and slow. No higher than your shoulders. And you're going to grab one and pull it across. When you pull it across, don't put your shoulder up here in your neck. Pull it down and across. And grab that elbow and push your hand back down so it's ideally between your shoulder blades. Then the other one, pull it across. Push it back. Then lace your fingers together. Pull your hands up as high as they'll go. Then reach over and pull them over the top. And up. Okay, so we're gonna do three exercises. I'm gonna show you each one, explain exactly how to do it, and then I want you to do one minute of each of them. So for the first one, you need two somethings that you can put on the floor. I'm actually gonna angle this down because I'm doing this on the floor and you'll be able to see better. Okay, so you need two somethings that you can put on the floor. I'm gonna put my cups here. Okay, now when I do this, I'm sitting up, I'm not leaning here. That's much easier. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, so your feet are here and you're picking them up over the cuffs. Hands are not here. You're here. It's your, your core muscles and your hip flexors that are doing the work here. Okay, that's the first one. <clears throat> the second one, you sit here and you point your fingers towards your toes, not back. Okay, ideally, you've got your palms flat. Mine, if I put my palms flat, straighten out my elbows, it leaves me here because they don't bend. If you have that same problem that I do, come up on your, on your fingertips and come up on your knuckles if you need to. So I'm here and I'm in tabletop, my back is flat. Okay, this is not the exercise. The exercise is bending your elbows. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick one foot up. It's not up here, it's not way down here. It's still, I can't pick both hands up and show you, but my quads are still lined up together. So I'm here, and this one is just coming to even with this one. And I do dips on one side, and I switch, and I do dips on the other side. And the very last one, your body's gonna be laying flat with your hands here. Okay, I'm never gonna put my head all the way down on the floor. Head's always gonna stay up a little bit. Hands don't go behind you, because if they come behind you, they pull you up and you're using momentum to get up instead of core strength. So you're here, and you're gonna sit all the way up, and then you reach out and grab your toes, and up, and back down. So you're getting here a core drill and a little bit of a stretch. Make sure you're sitting straight up, fingers are up, before you lay back. Never get your shoulders and your head on the floor. Straight up, out. Okay, so those three sets of exercises. That was um, feet over, the dips with one leg up, and um, the laying straight sit-ups. One minute of each of those exercises. Okay, so this month you are getting your stripe for accuracy 
And if you're in a kid's class, you're getting your star for fitness. So we're gonna start off with a drill that if you take live classes, we'll be doing some variation of this drill all month. So to shuttle run, you need a, a bunch of things. Ideally, your space would be longer than this, but this is the space I have, so this is what we're gonna work with. Okay, start with watch. So you pick one up, and you run, and you set it down, and you run back, and you pick another one up, and you set it down, and you run back, and then the next one, set it down, I'm using potholes. You can use red for one. It doesn't really matter. And you can put them a little bit further apart than that. This is how much space I have. Then you run and you pick them up one at a time. Okay, I'd like you to do that depending on, if you're using a short room like this, lay them out and pick them up about five times. If you're using a bigger space, like out in your yard or in the garage, three times is probably okay. But I want you to do that many times, and then I want you to come back with a target. Okay, so we're doing right now roundhouse kicks for accuracy. So I'm gonna do a roundhouse kick, the top of my foot is hitting the target. So this is going to be my target. The foot that I'm standing on, I'm going to crank this down a little bit so that you can see my toes. The foot that I'm standing on is pointing away. Okay, my knee is going to come up towards in the same direction as my target, and I'm going to kick with the top of my foot. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, kicking with the base of your shin is okay too. Kicking with your toes is not. That's how you break toes. Okay, then we'll do some on the other side. Make sure your standing foot is pointing away. Your knee is coming up towards the target. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then the next part of this, we're continuing with accuracy, but we're taking it back to fitness. So I would like you to find yourself a partner, ideally find yourself a partner. If you don't have a partner, you'll just do this in the air. What I'd like you to do is have your partner get some kind of a target. Um, this is pothole. It makes a good target because it's kind of floppy and it works from both directions. So your partner's just going to hold it out like this and back up, back away from you. So they're holding the target out, and you're going to do back leg roundhouse kick into the target. Back leg roundhouse kick into the target. Back leg roundhouse kick into the target. I should be hitting you with the top of my foot or my leg. My arms are not long enough. So you should have a partner holding it for you. And I would like you to do five times. You're going to kick down, all the way down, focusing on hitting the center of the target with the top of your foot. Run back, do it again. And then it's only fair, give the target to your partner. I mean, you take the, pot, the target and let your partner have a chance to kick. Okay, so karate, advanced karate kids, basic form one is your theme, and Tung Shido beginners, or Tung Shido white belts, basic form one is your form. We're gonna do the same thing with it. Um, we are working on accuracy this month, so we're gonna do the form. I'm gonna go all the way through it, and we're gonna talk about what we're hitting or blocking on each move. So you're actually going to say the words out loud. Then you're going to go find yourself a partner, and you're going to do the form with them. So if you're going to be throwing a kick, you're going to tell them where the kick is so that you can throw the block. If you're throwing a punch, you're going to throw it right towards that part of their body without actually making any contact. So I start here. Somebody's coming from that side. They're throwing a kick at this leg. I'm going to block that kick and step in and punch them in the shoulder plexus. Look over my shoulder. Another attacker. Block the roundhouse kick punch in the shoulder flex. And you're going, why do you have so many attackers doing the same thing? It's a basic form. It's the basis that everything else you're going to learn in Tung Shido builds on. So this teaches you the step 
the, the stance, the basic block, the basic punch, the three quarter turn, which you need for most of your tongue so forth. So it's keeps on, you keep on practicing the same attack. You look that way, somebody's there attacking you, they're throwing you kicks, step in, it's a hammer. We're calling this a block, but it's really a hammer fist to the inside of someone's leg. Then you're gonna throw three punches. One, two, three. Now there's a person here, okay? A lot of times we say that the interpretation of this is somebody's throwing a kick from there. Well, if somebody's throwing a kick from there, I'm doing the block here. So my interpretation for this is there's still someone in front of me. I punch them, I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna reach, not just up to my own ear, but all the way around their head and grab. I'm gonna bring my foot in, turn, throw them on the ground. And then what I would do as the actual interpretation of this, rather than the, the, the way the form is, I would step and punch down. And then look over my other shoulder, hammer to the side of the knee, punch the solar plexus. To the back, hammer to the side of the knee, three times, punch the solar plexus. One, two, three. And rather, I'm, I'm gonna interpret my three-quarter turn as a throw. So I reach all the way around, grab their opposite ear, turn, throw them on the ground, step and punch over my shoulder, hammer the inside of the knee, step and punch. Okay, so I want you to do that. I want you to think about what you're doing. And then I want you to set up that throw with somebody. Um, you might be able to talk to them into letting you throw them, but you don't have to. Set in, you gotta be really close. You can reach all the way around their head. So if this is my left hand, it's gonna go around the back of the head. It's gonna grab their left ear. And when you pull, whichever direction you pull their ear, the rest of their head is gonna go. Okay, so we are working on um, accuracy this month. So we're gonna do Chilsang Yoro. If you're a beginner, actually everybody's gonna do Chilsang Yoro. And then if you're advanced, you're also gonna do Nayanchi Shodan. And we're gonna work on, is we're gonna go all the way through the form. And on each move, just like we did with basic form one, you're going to identify your target. Then you're gonna get someone to come and attack you so that you can make sure that those moves would actually hit those targets. So we start to sling your row. We look, somebody's throwing a kick at our leg. You can get your leg out of the way, step in, hammer to the inside of their knee. They're trying to get you in the head, do a high block, chamber this hand here. The one that they hit your head with, hit towards your head with, pull it out of the way, chop to the neck, grab their head, slam their face into your knee, push them away, two punches to solar plexus. Same thing on the other side. Coming front, hands come to knuckles on your back hip. This is stylized and slow for the form. Someone is throwing a roundhouse kick, rib high. You're stepping in, blocking with this hand, and this one is reinforcing it. Then you're gonna chase them down with punches. The punch is a little bit uphill from your shoulder. They're assuming they're the same height as you are, and these punches are landing in the arm hip where there's lots of nerves and blood vessels, and you can dead in the arm. Okay, now I look over my shoulder. Someone is throwing a punch. I am going to get my head out of the way, catch that punch, parry it on the way. Now they're wide open, step and punch. Same thing on the other side. Parry, step and punch. Someone behind me chokes me. I bring my foot in, declare theirs, break the choke, push them away, pull them in and kick. Foolishly, they choke me again. I break the choke, push them away, grab their hands, pull them in and kick. Foolishly, they kick me again. Okay, I'm, I'm still facing the back for the form, but I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see where my hands are different. I'm going to break, I'm sorry, break, push away. This hand is gonna stay on their chest. This one is gonna grab their hand, pull it in, kick, punch, punch. Then someone is, I'm going to, we have two interpretations here. I'll show you one in one direction, one in the other direction. This one I don't like as well. Somebody is throwing a kick at me from there. I'm gonna come all the way around, block. So my head is out of the way. I'm in a calf stance, hammer to the inside of their knee, step and punch throat. The other interpretation that I like better from here, grab their head, come around, throw. Okay, I'm up on in a calf stance so that I'm clear of hitting them. In that case, you're not gonna hit the throat. 
you're going to step in, you might step in and hit the throat here, which isn't exactly how the form goes, but I like that interpretation better. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, if you're doing Nianchi Shodan, I'm going to show you one side. I want you to figure out the other side too. So we start here. Some people take this as a break in the choke. I take it as, hey judges, here I am. This is the form that I'm doing, so now you know what you should be watching for. Okay, somebody's coming at me with a front kick or a knee. I am going to push their knee down and then stomp on it. Then they're still standing right there. I am going to chop their neck, grab their head, elbow them in the neck, drop my hands like I'm gonna relax, then grab my hand. I pull my hand away, which is gonna drag them around to the front of me. I'm gonna punch them in the side of the neck. They're gonna to try to punch me again. I'm going to block them. They're gonna throw another punch. I'm gonna block the hook punch. Punch them in the solar plexus. Bring my hand back. This one stays out of his check. Hammer to the temple. They throw a hook punch. Block it. They throw another hook punch. Block it. And now I'm ready to go again. Okay, so I want you to do both sides. I want, I want you to you, we did the first side the first month, second side last month. So you've seen both sides. I want you to put a body there and figure out what you're hitting. Okay, and then um, Don's. We're going to continue with Gian. So we're going to go from, um, let's see. We're going to go from here. So low block, three horse stance punches. One, two, three. We did this, but this, I just want to do these few moves to lead it to where, we, to where we're going. I'm going to come through a crane stance, two rear leaning stance block. And I have no idea what the next move is, what we're doing. It just looks really cool. In. This one is palm in. This one is palm down. Same thing on the other side. I'm come through the crane stance, stomp and block, strike. Then I am going to, hands closed, they block down. Okay, I'm going to show you this frontwards and sideways. I'm going to step forward with my right foot to a basai chassis, block low, step back with the same left foot clear. Step all the way forward with basai chassis, break the grab. I'm going to step forward again with my right foot, high block, and then like Nianchi, pull this hand back and come back and strike the temple. Okay, I'll show you that section going sideways too. So from here, right foot steps forward, left foot steps back. Left foot steps forward, right foot steps forward. So now I'm in, I'm facing the front, I'm in a right chingle chassis, we're going to do another three quarter turn. This one comes to chingle chassis and a center block. One, step and punch. Two, and then same thing on the other side. One, two, and then we will finish it up next week. I would like you to take that piece, if you can, practice it on somebody, figure out what you're actually hitting through that section. Okay, this self-defense is from the is a review for advanced karate kids. It's from the beginner karate kid curriculum, and it's also in the tungsteno white belt curriculum. Okay, somebody grabs your wrist. If they grab my wrist and I step back with this foot, Nothing happens. I haven't changed their balance. They're just holding on to my foot. Well, that's not true. My head is a little bit further away, so they're less likely to punch me with the other hand, but I'm still not going anywhere. But if they grab that, that hand and I step back with the opposite foot, they either let go or they come in with me like this and it breaks their balance. So what I'm going to do is as they grab that hand, I'm going to step back with the foot that's under it. The other hand is going to come up to my ear, and as I settle my weight, I'm going to slide this arm down as if I was doing a low block and my side of my wrist is going to hit their arm where it's holding onto my hand. Okay, so if you're in the Karate Kids class, it starts here. I don't want any trouble. Somebody grabs your wrist, the foot under it steps back, other hand comes up, push off, punch, kick, cover up. Touch it out class, you don't have to do I don't want any trouble and cover up, but it's the same self-defense. Somebody grabs your wrist, step back with the opposite foot. Basically, it's a low block. You're wiping their hand off your wrist. Punch, some violence, and then get yourself gone. Okay, so we did uh, 
be self-defense from the beginner curriculum. We're going to do one from the, in the uh, we did self-defense from the white belt curriculum. We're going to do one now from the beginner curriculum. It's called a soda guard, and then we'll review the wrist locks again. A soda guard is a, a um, it's a judo throw. It means, and you want to remember this for your black belt test, it means major outside reap, R-E-A-P, like the Grim Reaper. Okay, so I'm going to start a punch in my head. I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to block. I'm going to parry. I'm going to shuffle in so that my forearm is in their throat. That works really well if they're the same height as me or a little shorter. If they're a lot taller, I'm going to come in instead and take their face. Then I'm going to put my foot behind theirs, and I'm going to push and pull. So this pushes and that pulls. You have to make sure that you get your foot behind theirs and you pull all the way up to there. Because if you hook your knee behind theirs and you do this, they're gonna land, either they're gonna land on your knee and break it, or they're gonna land on top of their crumpled knee and break it. So you've gotta make sure that you have that big clear, okay? Working on accuracy, that's the thing that needs to happen for this. So someone's punching you, in the head. You get out of the way, block, parry, slide in either with your forearm or with your hand in their face. As you slide in, slide your leg behind theirs and then push and pull or push and pull. Okay, so we're going to have the person offer you their right hand. I'm going to take my left hand and grab the whole thumb blade of his hand. I'm not just grabbing the thumb, I'm grabbing the whole blade. And then I put my right hand across the other blade of his hand. I'm gonna bring it up against my body, so I'm using my body for leverage. And I'm gonna rotate my right shoulder towards my left and down. He tries to get away from this by pulling straight back. Okay, so I am going to step inside, take my bicep, my right bicep, put it under his elbow, reach over, with my right hand, grab the pinky side of his hand again, tuck it against my body, and rotate his pinky away. This is called inside cradle arm bar straight for obvious reasons. He tries to get away from this by bending his elbow, I go with it. Okay, this is inside cradle arm bar bent. If I have his elbow out here, I don't have any control. I have to have his elbow tucked inside fingers are here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my hand down and lift my bicep. From here I'm going to come back out to wrist lock one. I'm going to take my hand and swing it up and over. So from my left side across to my right, bring it back up, grab his pinky blade with my right hand, put my thumb right below his knuckles and then with my other hand put my other thumb right below his knuckles. I am gonna bring it towards my body, push his fingers towards his elbow, and pull his wrist towards me. Okay, that's wrist lock number two. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna to go to outside cradle arm bar straight. If your hands are big enough, you can grab their whole hand. Otherwise, just take these two fingers, step to the outside with your, right, your left elbow, cradle their arm, reach across, grab the thumb, his arm is straight, and I'm gonna rotate his thumb over and across. He tries to get away from this by bending his elbow. I come with him, so I have a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. This is called inside cradle armbar bent. It's also called wrist lock number three. It's also called cobra. Then I'm gonna step back out here. I've still got his small fingers in my right hand. I'm gonna take my left hand, grab the thumb blade again, let go of my right hand. I'm going to step in, bring his fingers to the inside of my wrist, come up, tuck his elbow inside mine, between my elbow and my chest. If I'm out here, oh, I'm going to hurt his fingers, but I'm not going to have control of anything else. Tucked in here, and I put the other hand on top, and I squish. This is called gooseneck. Okay, so from here, I'm going to t free up my right hand grab his two big fingers. I'm not releasing the pressure on this hand. Using this bone as a fulcrum, I'm gonna pull his fingers over. Once I've got that, I can release the other hand and grab the other set of fingers. I wanna get a good grip on the fingers, pull them in and split them. Step out, I'm gonna put his elbow on top of my shoulder. I'm gonna pull his fingers back towards me, split them, 
and pull the hand down so I'm stressing his shoulder. Now, I'm going to keep his small fingers. I'm not gonna let them go. I'm gonna let go the big fingers, turn my hand over this way so that my thumb side is down and my pinky's up and re-grab those same fingers. Then I'm gonna step out. Now I can release his small fingers and I'm gonna re-grab them the same way so both of my thumbs are up. I'm gonna pull his wrist and his body towards me as I push his fingers back towards his head. And then I'm gonna let go of his small fingers. I'm gonna bring his elbow in. So what I'm gonna do is I gotta come directly in front of him. I'm gonna tuck his elbow inside of mine. If it's not tucked in, I don't have control. I gotta tuck his elbow in. So I want a 90 degree angle in his elbow and as close to 90 as I can get in his wrist. And I'm pulling his fingers back. That's elbow in. Then I'm gonna go elbow up. I'm gonna turn the same thing here. And ideally, he's not any taller than me, so I can do this. I can keep my elbow on top of his. You might need to go here. Don't resist the urge to go there. Okay, so I'm here. I still have a 90 degree angle and a 90 degree angle, and I'm pulling his fingers up towards his bicep. Then I'm going to go elbow down. This is the most confusing transition in the whole set. I'm still hanging on to his big fingers with my right hand. My left hand is gonna come up inside his shoulder, push his elbow down, pull his elbow up against my chest, but below my ribs, not up here, because if I bring it up here, he's gonna come up and take my, thro my throat. So I want it below my ribs. Hand's gonna come in, grab my own wrist. Then I'm gonna turn my finger over here and pull down. And then this transition, you have no control in this transition. I'm gonna turn it over, put both of my hands on top, tuck his elbow back into my armpit, and squeeze here. That's the whole series. Thank you, sir. Okay, so chucks. We're going to do this with the single chuck, which is what beginners are doing, and we're doing it double chuck, which is what advanced are doing, and with the, tongue, the karate kids are reviewing both of those. So we're going to start um, with your chuck in your on your right shoulder. Okay, you're gonna do four figure eights. One, two, three, four, catch. Step forward, high block, punch. So my left hand high blocks, my right hand punches. I'm not punching like this, I'm punching this way so that the tip of the chuck is hitting somebody, hopefully in the throat. I'm gonna pull my hands in. Front kick, pump front kick, low block. Okay, then I'm going to do one helicopter. We've practiced helicopters. Helicopter goes here, here, and then I gotta bring it to my hip. And we've practiced triangles, hip, hip, shoulder, hip, hip, shoulder. So what I'm doing is my hand is uh, here, low block. I'm gonna do one helicopter, hip, hip, shoulder. One helicopter, hip, hip, shoulder. And what my feet are gonna do while I'm doing that, it's called the rolling step. My right foot, and I'll show you in the other direction too. My right foot comes into the left foot, so stepping away from my target, and then my left foot steps back. So I go from a right front stance or chingle chas to a guard stance. Right foot comes in, left foot comes out. I come back to the same space, but now my left foot is forward. Okay, so go on the other way. If you want to follow along with me, I'm here. Right foot in, left foot out. So what I'm doing with my chucks. From this shoulder, one, two, three, four, catch. High block punch, front kick, pump front kick, low block. One helicopter, all the way back to feet out, hip, hip, bring it back to your right shoulder. Okay, if you were doing two chucks, two chucks, four figure eights and catch, one, two, three, four, catch. Left foot forward, high block, punch. Front kick, pump front kick, low block. Now you have two options here. You can either do the same single-handed helicopter, hip, hip, both of them up to your shoulders, or from here, you can bring both hands as you do your rolling step over. So from one side over to the other, here, and both of them back to your shoulder. So four figure eights, one, two, three, four, catch. Left foot, left hand, step high block, right hand punches, right leg, front kick, pump front kick, low block. If you're gonna take this option, hands start on your right hip, Roll the step, they come over the top, they land on your left hip, right one comes back to the right hip, pull them both up to your shoulders. Okay, 
Um, advanced Karate Kids and Tung Shido, two straight ground and up. You guys are doing Kama. So this whole cycle we're doing Kama set. This month we're doing the Action Karate Form 8 part of Kama set. So we start where five ended. So five went here, there. So we start here, first count. Hands come to cup and saucer on your right hip. Left foot chambers a side kick. So your knee is 90 degree angles. Your foot is up as if it was on a box. You do a side kick, re-chamber, step back to chingulchasi facing that side. So you turn to the front, you're in a nice wide chingulchasi. Right hand cuts down, left hand cuts down. Index, step back out, punch right, punch left. You're gonna stand up, punch. Turn the comma over. Turn it over by doing this. Okay, I got it here. I'm gonna make a peace sign, put my fingers between the peace sign, put my thumb underneath, grab, so that I'm just cutting up. So I'm gonna to step to Basse Chassis, cut up. I'm gonna bring the comma back down the same way, turn it over. Guard stance, I'm gonna step back so I hit. Slide up, side kick, turn and guard stance. So when you're turning the comma over, okay, I got it here. I'm gonna make my fingers into a peace sign, put them around the comma, put my thumb underneath, turn it over and grab. And then when I bring it back the other way, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm making a continuous circle that's going around. So I'm here, peace sign, put it around the handle, thumb goes here, pushes, and re-grab. Okay, so, um, black belts, all black belts, Thomas Chido black belts, AK black belts, Chris Colombo, uh, comma form. I'm going to start at the beginning only because, um, I don't know it well enough to start in the middle. It confuses me. So we start here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, cut down left across, um, Cross to the neck, 45. Front kick, basai chassi, reverse, um, reverse bow stance or, or rear leaning stance, however you want to call it. Right hand's gonna do an orbit, roll and step. As I'm up, I'm gonna come across, strike 45 degrees to the neck again. Turn my weapons over as I spin, drop my right knee to the floor, cut up. Punch out, punch, so my weapon is here. So it, it's my hands horizontal and cutting out. Turn it back over again, double low block. Right knees down, I'm going to stand up, pick up my right foot and bring it to that corner. Then I'm going to shuffle to the back, seven cut both hands, 45 degrees straight to the neck. Pop up for a kick, last side chassis, come back and pose. Everybody should have that part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do basically triple chassis, but facing the side. So I'm here, facing the side, and my weapons are out here. I step with my right foot, sit back with my left foot, so I'm like wide open, okay, somebody come hit me. And as they come running at me, I'm gonna step back and, and block my leg. Now, you, what the guy in the video, what, what Mr. Colombo does, and I can't do this, is he says step, step, and he does a, a split kick. So both feet come up in a split and the commas come down here and he lands here. I can't do that. If you would like to do that, it's wonderful. Let me know. But what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to do a side kick. And I get back here and then the next move is a spin, hook kick, and back to here. 